This is Average Joe PT, and on this episode, we're going to talk about how you tell the difference between snapping hip and just good old-fashioned arthritis. So stay tuned. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you first think about snapping hip, which we talked about in the last episode, I'm going to leave a link up there for you. We talk specifically about tendons that strum over the bones, like I show right here. They can either snap on the top part, okay? They can snap, excuse me, they can snap on the top part or the bottom part. Uh, and I could name all these for you, but it really doesn't matter. Or they can strum on the inside, way down here, right where the two bones meet. So anywhere where there's a nice long tendon, and you have a bone right next to it and you start moving the ball around it's going to go ahead and snap into that spot so that's where you have the external and the internal snapping hip syndrome but on this episode we're going to talk specifically about how you tell the difference between the two now when we talk about osteoarthritis okay that's really when we're talking about the ball the head here and then the socket now they're both lined with cartilage now as you can see as the cartilage wears, it wears on the ball and it wears on the socket. So when that ball is in there and just kind of rolling around and around, it's not cartilage on cartilage. Now it's starting to be cartilage on bone and bone on bone. And what happens is the ball and the socket actually start to have pitting in it. You know, when you're on a, a nice, dry, Excuse me a nice road and you're driving and it's nice and smooth and you have a pothole just imagine a thousand little potholes and when you drive over with your nice rubber tires it ain't so smooth and that's exactly how the ball in the socket is when you have pitting pitting in the ball or and or both pitting in the socket it's not smooth no more and it's going to catch and it's going to get inflamed very very easy now there's some treatments that you can do treatment number one really is the doctor goes in and does an injection. They're gonna do a steroid injection, usually either dexamethasone or prednisone. You might even do a little lidocaine in there and inject that spot in the back of the socket where a lot of the pain is coming from. And so there, if I'm gonna zoom in there close here, you have the, this nice little brownish yellow thing is kind of representative of the ligaments and then within those ligaments is the labrum and this is that white thick tissue that makes sure that ball and the socket stay together like a suction cup and they got to penetrate through that area to inject that medication in there and get the inflammation to calm down now typically that'll last probably a couple months the inflammation especially if the ball and the socket's really bad if it's really bad if you get two months out of it you'll be lucky depending on the activity level you're at now there activity wise you're going to want to stay away from several things a lot of squatting squatting with lifting impact activities like running or jogging uh you know anything that might be a jumping type activity where you coming up and you're landing down where that ball and socket have to normally have a lot of cushion and don't anymore you're going to really get that thing inflamed so activities that you'd want to do is like swimming anything that you have that's fluid based uh any and you'd probably want if you can be in a little bit colder water environment when you're swimming it's gonna be better than a nice hot warm like a hot tub environment because you want to reduce the inflammation heat increases inflammation so we want that you might want to do some sort of bicycling that can have that's a low impact activity that you can do that'll actually help when I talk about synovial fluid in the spine, you have synovial fluid uh, within the joints. And so they help keep things nourished and lubricated in there. And I always say is lo uh, motion is lotion. And so that nice rhythmic motion will help keep that synovial fluid in there like riding a bicycle. Or just do like I do when I talk about my back episodes where chronic back pain when we want to do just a nice walking program because it's a non-impact activity and that will also help not only with your back but if you have some arthritis in your hips that will help too. So let's get to how do you really tell the difference between snapping hip and a ball and socket arthritic issue going on like osteoarthritis. Now there are several types of osteoarthritis. I'm, 
I'm just talking about OA. There's, there's rheumatoid arthritis and there's a few others, so I'm just talking specifically about the wear and tear of a joint as we age. So besides the injections, besides the, uh, modifying your activities and doing those um, non-impacting uh, type activities, what you also want to do is ice it. Some sort of anti-inflammatory oral meds also might help too to help reduce that pain. And you want to go ahead and do a, a light stretching program because you because when that ball and socket start to give you pain, all those muscles around that hip area, all those muscles around the hip, all the gluteal muscles, all the muscles I talked about last time on snipping, uh, snapping hip syndrome, the iliotibial band, the tetrafascia lata, the iliopsoas, all those muscles are going to start to contract in what we call muscle guarding or tighten up to uh, try and support the joint. It's a protective mechanism, but unfortunately, when the joint's already wore, it's just gonna irritate it even more. So a nice, you know, that nice lunge I showed you last time, and the snapping hip is a good stretch to do, as well as making sure that you're getting some good protein intake, like I always talk about. And make sure you're getting in grams versus milligrams. One of my episodes I'll link up there. I really started to botch that a lot. It was pretty crazy. But anyways, um, I'd love to have you guys go ahead and subscribe. You know, hit the bell. Um, I bring content. I try and do a couple times a week. Bring in the walking program with a couple videos all at the same time. Um, if you have any questions, just DM me down below. But... To go further into how do you really tell the difference between a snapping hip and osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is going to hurt really in the morning, stiff and tight. And as the day goes on, that uh, excuse me, arthritis will start to that start to warm up. The tissue starts to warm up. It starts to loosen up, and then your pain starts to really reduce a lot. Versus snapping hip. If you're doing more activity, it's going to get inflamed more because it's a repetitive trauma um, and it's a tendon type issue than versus just the ball and socket is worn where uh, it wouldn't matter what activity you do as long as you're doing it non-impact, the hip will start to loosen up and the arthritis pain will start to calm down. The other thing is, is with osteoarthritis, is all usually typically most movements will increase pain. Not always, but usually if your arthritis is really bad at one spot, it'll really start to like catch or feel like the joint, like the knee won't go towards the chest or go out to the side more because that ball is really starting to roll into where the arthritis is at versus snapping hip. It's just clicking and snapping. You're not going to get that a lot with osteoarthritis of the hip. So that's a really the main differences between the two and how you can tell the difference between do I have really osteoarthritis causing my pain or is it really coming from do I have snapping hip syndrome? So go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear them, good or bad, hopefully good. Leave me a thumbs up and a like. And until next time, Scully and I always like to say look up and keep smiling. See you next time, folks.